Hello guys, welcome to this YouTube channel. A good day to everyone watching this video. In this video, I am going to start my first lecture of the biochemistry series. So this is going to be my video 1. In this video, I am going to discuss some of the basic plus important properties of amino acids. So let's get started. So what are amino acids? Amino acids are nothing but the building blocks of proteins. So proteins which are actually macromolecules are made up of amino acids. So proteins, uh, as you all know, they are polypeptides. They are linked by peptide bonds. And since they are made up of uh, many peptides together, they are called polypeptides. And they are very important macromolecules or I would rather call them a very important biomolecules. Because they are mainly used for the biological systems to exist and perform vital functions. So without proteins, the existence or the performance of vital functions of a biological system will not be possible. So proteins, as you all know, they are also called information molecules along with nucleic acids. So nucleic acids like the DNA or the RNA, they are called information molecules because they are responsible for carrying information from one generation to other. This is known as heredity as we all know. But proteins, they are also called information molecules because they mainly perform critical functions in various biological pathways uh, in the form of enzymes. Okay, and they constitute the largest fraction apart from water inside a cell. So apart from water being the major medium for the cell to exist, apart from water, there are a larger portion of proteins also existing inside a cell. So now getting back to the topic. So what are amino acids? Amino acids are kind of compounds that contain both amino group and a carboxyl group. So we all know about functional groups in organic chemistry. So if you see the structure here uh, nearby, you can see this is the uh, skeletal structure of an amino acid. So in this structure, you can see, you can easily find out there is an amino group and there is a carboxyl group. So carboxyl group is nothing but your acid group and the amino group is nothing but your basic group because it is capable, it, it has a lone pair of electrons in the nitrogen atom. So if you see this carbon, this carbon is called uh, the alpha carbon or the C alpha. That's because the amino group and the carboxyl group are attached to the same carbon and hence this carbon is called the C alpha. Okay, and this C alpha carbon is attached to an amino group and a carboxyl group and it, also, it is also attached to a hydrogen and this R group is the one that is going to differ for each and every amino acid. Okay, so I will be talking more about this in the coming slides. So the difference between various amino acids will mainly depend upon the difference in the R group of the amino acid. So that this R group is what is going to distinguish each of the uh, available amino acids. Okay, moving on to the next slide. Okay, if the R group is simple like a simple hydrogen atom, then this is called the simplest case and the amino acid is nothing but your glycine. And why is it called a chiral? I will be discussing it in the next slide. However, if you take proline into consideration, which is also a very important amino acid, it is not an amino acid, but it is called an amino acid. This is because the C alpha carbon is connected to a secondary amino group not, and not a primary amino group as you can, uh, as you saw in the previous slide. Okay, so this is again an exception. Okay, moving on. How amino acids behave as acids and bases? So, let me take the first case of a low pH condition. Under a low pH condition, the amino acid will be positively charged. Why? Because under low pH condition, the H plus concentration is going to be very high. As a result, the amino group, as I already told you, the amino uh, group, the nitrogen atom of the amino group has a lone pair of electron and hence it behaves as a base. So the amino group will be protonated and hence it will be positively charged. While the carboxyl group will also be protonated but it will be uncharged and hence the net charge if you see it will be positive. So under a low pH condition, 
the amino acid will be positively charged. Now go back to the next condition, the high pH condition. Under the high pH condition, the amino acid will be negatively charged. Why? Because under high pH condition, your OH minus ion concentration is going to be very high. So the amino group is going to be deprotonated and hence it will be uncharged. That is as NH2 itself it will remain. And the carboxyl group will be deprotonated. That is it will furnish out its H plus ion and it will be negatively charged in the form of COO minus ion. And hence the net charge is going to be negative. I hope this is very clear. But this is not going to be always the case. At a given pH, say Pi, okay, so this is called your isoelectric point, which is going to be a very important characteristic feature of every amino acid. So at this isoelectric point, the amino acid will have a net zero charge. Why is that so? Because in this particular pH, the amino group will be protonated and it will be positively charged and the carboxyl group will be deprotonated and it is going to be negatively charged. And what happens? It is going to be positive, it is going to be negative and the net charge is going to be zero. As a result, this form of the amino acid is called the Zwitter ionic form, also known as the double ion because there is going to be a both positive and negative nullifying the effect of any charge and there is going to be a net zero charge. This this particular uh, phenomenon or existence of a Zwitter ionic form of a given amino acid will take place at a particular pH and this particular pH is called your isoelectric point. It's called your PI, commonly denoted by this symbol. Why I am stressing on this isoelectric point is that in certain gate papers, I have seen direct questions asking about what is the isoelectric point of say arginine, or lysine etc. So if you can remember the isoelectric point of the 20 standard amino acids then it is going to be a cakewalk for such questions. You just have to tick the right number and this isoelectric point is also a very important characteristic as I already mentioned because it is also used as one of the principles to separate proteins based on their isoelectric point in a technique called IEF. It's called isoelectric focusing which I will be discussing in a further video series. Okay, moving on to the next slide. Okay, so uh, till now we have seen a uh, few basic concepts. Now I am going to introduce you to two new terms that is amino acids are going to be amphiprotic and amphoteric. So what do you mean by amphiprotic is that amino acids they can accept both, uh, they can accept and donate protons. They can both accept and donate protons. As a result they are called amphiprotic in nature. However, uh, since they can accept and donate protons, they are going to act as both an acid and a base and hence they are called amphoteric in nature. So these two uh, terms you should be pretty clear with and they are easily understandable as you can clearly see. All amino acids except glycine are optically active and they have the property of chirality. Why glycine is not optically active because if you see the structure of glycine, I am drawing it here, uh, you have H above and a H below. So first you should understand what chirality means. In chi chirality means that it consists of one or more asymmetric carbon atoms. It consists of one or more asymmetric carbon atoms in their given structure. A carbon, what do you mean by asymmetric carbon? It's a carbon atom which is attached to four different groups. You know the valence of carbon is going to be four. If all the four groups are going to be different, then that particular carbon atom is going to be called asymmetric. And if any compound has an asymmetric carbon atom or more than one asymmetric carbon atom, it is going to be a chiral compound. And when it is a chiral compound, it will be optically active. Okay. If you clearly see the structure of glycine, which I've drawn here, you can clearly find out that there are two hydrogen atoms that are being attached to carbon. And hence, it is not going to be optically active or it is not going to be a chiral compound. However, if you take the structure of, say, alanine, uh, which I am drawing it here, uh, NH2 and you have a CH3 below, you have four different groups. You have a hydrogen, you have an amino group, you have a carboxylic acid group and you have a methyl group. As a result, this carbon atom is going to be a chiral, carb chiral carbon atom or it is going to be an asymmetric carbon atom. 
Hence, this compound is chiral compound and it is going to exhibit optical activity. So, except glycine, all the amino acids are optically active and they are going to be chiral compounds. So, glycine, since it is not optically active or it, it doesn't have chirality, it is going to be called a chiral. So, chiral compounds, if you see, they are going to be optically active. What do you mean by optically active is they are going to rotate the plane of polarized light either. Okay, polarized light is the one that you get after passing an unpolarized light through a polarimeter. Okay, so unpolarized light will have vibrations in all directions whereas polarized light will have the photon vibrations only in a given direction. So, after passing the unpolarized light through a polarimeter, you will get a polarized light. And if the given compound is going to be is going to rotate the plane of polarized light either way, then it is going to be optically active. Okay. So, if the rotation is clockwise, if the compound rotates the plane of polarized light clockwise, that is to the right, it is going to be called dextrorotatory compounds assigned by positive sign. If the compound is going to rotate the polarized the plane of polarized light, counterclockwise or anticlockwise or to the left, then it is called levorotatory compounds and it is assigned by negative sign. So, this particular convention is very, very important and it can also be tested in your exams. Okay. Hope the concepts are clear till now. I will be moving to the next slide. Moving on. So, this is a very uh, basic classification that I would like you all to know. That is, uh, Amino acids can be either standard amino acids or non-standard amino acids. So, what do you mean by standard amino acids is that standard amino acids are prote proteinogenic amino acids and they are going to be incorporated into the proteins through the ribosomes. We all know what ribosomes are. Ribosomes are very important cell organelles present inside every cell and they are going to be, uh, they are going to play a very critical role in protein machinery. Okay, so they, they are the ones which are going to uh, help incorporate amino acids uh, to form proteins. So, these ribosomes, if the uh, given amino acid can be incorporated into the proteins with the help of ribosomes, then they are going to be called the standard amino acids or proteinogenic amino acid. And we have 22 different standard amino acids are there and all of them are L-alpha amino acids. I am going to tell you what this L means in the next slide. And these standard amino acids are denoted by simple three-letter codes called codons, okay. Codons will be dealt in great detail when I uh, take molecular biology lecture series. But as of now, you can just remember if you have a good idea, then it is fine. Otherwise, uh, you can just remember it as three simple letter codes called codons. Okay, moving on to non-standard amino acids. So, non-standard amino acids, they are present naturally in the cells, but they are not incorporated into the proteins through the ribosomes. And they are generated by post-translational modification. What do you mean by translation is that, we all know the central dogma of biology, that is uh, DNA, uh, uh, information from DNA will be passed on to the mRNA, which will in turn code for the protein. So, this particular process that is from mRNA to protein is called translation. Formation of a protein from the mRNA code is going to be translation. So, what do you mean by post-translation modification is that after the translation process has taken place and after the uh, protein has been formed, there is going to be some modifications that are going to take place and these modifications are called post-translational modification and they take place in the standard amino acids. So, these non-standard amino acids are generated by the post-translational modifications of standard amino acids. Like example, 4-hydroxyproline, 5-hydroxylysine, desmosine, which is a derivative of lysine. Okay. So, these are all examples of non-standard amino acids and they are present naturally in the cells, but they are not incorporated into the proteins through the ribosomes. They are going to be generated through the post-translational modifications of standard amino acids. And they play very critical role like in case of gene expressions etc. Okay, which I will be dealing in great detail when I take it, uh, when I take up molecular biology lecture series. Okay, uh, hope it is clear till now. I will move on to the next slide. Okay, 
So uh, I was talking about this L alpha uh, L alpha amino acid in my uh, previous slide. So I should be explaining that now. So there's something called a configuration system, which is called the DL system absolute configuration. So you should know what it is. So it refers to the absolute configuration of the alpha carbon in glyceraldehyde. So glyceraldehyde, it is an aldose sugar. It consists of three carbon and uh, the configuration system that has been developed keeping glyceraldehyde in uh, reference is called the DL system. Okay. So uh, this is the structure of glyceraldehyde. Again, it is an asymmetric carbon because it has an aldehyde here. It has an OH here, it has a CH2OH here and it has an H here. So all four are different. So it's going to be an asymmetric carbon. And uh, only for asymmetric carbon, we will be uh, having this. So CHOOH, H and CH2, CH2OH. So in this case, it is called L-glyceraldehyde because the OH group is attached to the left of the chiral carbon. Okay. So the OH group, which is the hydroxyl group, it is attached to the left of the chiral carbon and hence it is called L-glyceraldehyde. Remember it as left and hence L. Okay, that will be easy to remember. And if you see here, if you take the mirror image, these are these are going to be enantiomers because they are going to be non-superimposable mirror images. So they are called enantiomers. So if you take the mirror image, you will have your H here, CHO, OH hydroxyl group here and the CH2OH group here. In this case, the hydroxyl group is present on the right side, right side of the chiral carbon. And hence, it is going to be a D-glyceraldehyde. Okay. So, this L and D system is not the same as the levorotatory or the dextrorotatory. Please get that very clear in mind because that is experimentally determined. And this one, it is like based on the structure that we determine. Okay, so it's not the same as levorotatory or the dextrorotatory. That will be determined only when uh, the compound rotates the plane of the polarized light after the unpolarized light has passed through the polarimeter. So, okay, so and that, and that will be designated by a plus and a minus sign. However, this is designated by L and D. Okay, so DL con configuration, absolute configuration system is different from that of dextro and levo. Okay. So now if I apply the same uh, ideology in case of uh, chiral alpha amino acids, then the, in, in case of L configuration, it is all with respect to the amino group. Okay. So if the amino group that is the alpha amino group is on the left, then it is going to be L configuration. And if the alpha amino group is on the right, then it is going to be your D configuration. So I have given an example here, uh, taking valine as an example. Valine is a standard amino acid. It is one of the standard amino acids. So if you see here the structure of valine, it has C. Uh, above you have the carboxylate ion and here you have the NH3 plus and H and the R group that is characteristic of valine. Okay. So the amino group is present on the left here, left hand side of the alpha carbon, which is the alpha carbon. This carbon is your alpha carbon. So here it is present on the left side, the NH3 plus, whereas if you take the mirror image, the NH3 plus is present on the right side. And hence this is going to be, when it is left, it is going to be L-valine. And when it is going to be a uh, right, uh, right hand side, the amino group is present on the right hand side, then it is called D-valine. However, in case of biological systems, uh, all these standard amino acids are going to be L alpha amino acid. You don't, you will not be finding D alpha amino acids except in some rare situations. Okay. So uh, L amino, L alpha amino acids is going to be the standard notation everywhere in case of your biological system. Okay. Hope this particular concept is clear. Moving on. I am going to start with the structure, symbol and the names of the uh, first 20 standard amino acids. Okay, 20 standard amino acids. Actually, there are 22, but I will be starting with 20 first, 20 standard amino acids. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I have made it as a tabulation here and I have also divided into a uh, few groups for you to understand it uh, easily. Okay, so first group is amino acids with non-polar side chains. Okay, the R group that I mentioned that is going to be characteristic for each amino acid. So I'll draw the skeletal structure here once again. 
for you to understand okay so this r group it is going to vary for each amino acid and hence you will have different names okay so this r we are going to classify the amino acid based on the nature of this r group okay so if this r group is going to be non polar then we have the set of nine amino acids that is going to be mentioned here the first one is glycine glycine the three letter code is gly and the one letter code is g why i am stressing on this three letter and one letter code is that when proteins are written when a given protein is written based on its amino acid constituents or when a primary structure of a protein is mentioned it's just going to be most the standard way of writing it is going to be in terms of one letter code like g a b l i like this okay so you should know what each amino acid is in order to understand or decipher further properties of the given protein that is why i stress on this three letter and one letter code and it has to be in your fingertips before you start a very good revision for your exam okay so the structure is going to be the r group is going to be a h okay so you you if you can remember this skeletal structure you should only remember the r group for all the 20 so it's just going to be 20 uh, uh, structures or 20 groups that you are going to memorize in case of uh, these 20 standard amino acids okay the next uh, next amino acid is your alanine and it is uh, the three letter code is ala and the one letter code is a okay so the r group here is going to be a methyl group ch3 group okay so the next amino acid is valine the three letter code is val and the one letter code is v and if you see the uh, structure of valine it is ch bonded to two ch3s it looks like a v inverted v and hence you remember it as valine okay fine moving down so the next one is leucine okay so the three letter code is leu and the one letter code is l if you take the structure of leucine it is going to be one extra ch2 added to that of valine r group okay so if you add one extra ch2 group in between the c and ch it is going to be leucine okay so it is pretty simple to remember just remember it logically don't just mug it up if you mug it up you tend to make mistakes in the exam and, and uh, it is not advisable i would suggest you just connect and learn interlink things and learn and it will be really helpful okay the next one is going to be isoleucine uh, the three letter code is ile and the one letter code is i if you take the structure of isoleucine it's the iso form of leucine and then and hence there will be modification here so you have a c attached to h there's a methyl group and an ethyl group attached down ethyl okay so uh, remember uh, iso form of leucine okay so there's going to be a change in the branch here okay the next one is proline as i already mentioned this is going to be an amino acid and i will be saying the reason now so proline the three letter code is pro and one letter code is p and uh, why is it called an amino acid is because of this you have an nh2 plus it's a secondary amino secondary amino group and hence it's called an amino acid because of the presence of the secondary amino group proline has a pretty rigid structure or uh, stereochemically very uh, you know it's a very uh, steric structure and hence uh, if if a given protein is uh, is having a lot of proline in its amino acid constituent it is not easily flexible okay so just a fact to remember here so it has a very uh, rigid structure and it is not uh, easily subjected to any flexibility so if you see nh2 plus ch2 ch2 ch it's like a ring here it's a ring here and uh, it's a secondary amino group okay moving on uh, i'm talk i'm going to talk about methionine methionine it's uh, the three letter code is met and the one letter code is m so if you see methionine it has a sulfur in its side chain so it is important to remember so it's going to be ch2 ch2 s ch3 so it has a sulfur and it is a sulfur containing amino acid sulfur containing amino acid so next is going to be phenylalanine so it is going to be an aromatic amino acid why because it has an aromatic side chain aromatic amino acid uh, aa stands for amino acid it's just a short form so the three letter code is the and one letter code is f it is not p because for p we already have proline so it is going to be f so make a note of it uh, don't get confused so if you see the side chain it's going to be ch2 and a benzene ring attached to 
the below of CH2. Okay. The next one is going to be tryptophan. Uh, again, this is also going to be an aromatic uh, amino acid because it has an aromatic side chain or an aromatic R group. And uh, the three letter code is going to be TRP and uh, the one letter code is going to be W. So again, make a note of it. It's not T because for T we have another amino acid called threonin. Okay. So if you see the structure, the structure here is quite complicated and I would suggest you to draw it a minimum of five times to make sure that you memorize this structure. It, this is nothing but your indole ring. Okay. So if you are very strong in chemistry, then it, it, it shouldn't be a problem. Otherwise, if you are pretty new to this particular uh, structure, I would suggest you to draw it minimum of five times without seeing so that you will be able to remember it over a long period of time. So this is going to be your indole ring and it is present in tryptophan. So they might also ask you a question, indole ring containing amino acid, then you have to mention it as tryptophan as your answer. Okay. Moving on to the next set of amino acids, the other classification. Okay. So here the R group is going to be uncharged, but it is going to be polar. Okay. So it is going to be uncharged, but polar R chain. Okay. Polar R group. Okay. The first one that I'm going to tell you is serine. So the three letter code is SER and the one letter code is S. So if you see the structure, it consists of an hydroxyl group. It's a CH2OH. Okay. Pretty easy to remember. The next one is, next one is threonin. For this, the three letter code is THR and one letter code is T. Okay. So don't get confused between threonin and tryptophan. So for tryptophan, it is W. For threonin, it is T. And if you see the structure, it has, uh, it, it has an extra methyl group compared to that of serine. So serine and threonin, they are hydroxyl group containing amino acids. But the difference between serine and threonin is one extra methyl group in case of threonin attached to this uh, R group, attached present in this R group, attached to this CH. Okay. Here you have CH2, here you have CH, CH3 and an OH. Uh, moving on. Next is cysteine. Uh, the three letter code is CYS. One letter code is C. And this is also a sulfur containing amino acid. Okay. Because uh, which, which is the other one? The other one is methionine. Sulfur containing amino acid. And it is a very simple structure. It's going to be CH2SH. Okay. And uh, the next one is asparagine. And the three letter code is ASN. And the one letter code is N. It is not A. Why? It is not A because for A we already have alanine. Okay. So it is asparagine. It is ASN, the three letter code and N is the one letter code. And uh, if you see the structure, it consists of an amide group. Okay. So it is an amide group. Though it is not charged, it is polar. Okay. So you have CH2, CO, NH2 as your R group. And if you see the glutamine, glutamine. It, uh, the three letter code is GLN and the one letter code is Q. It's not again G for G. We already have glycine. So it is going to be Q. And if you see uh, the R group, it is going to have an extra CH2 group compared to that of asparagine. So it's going to be CH2, CH2, CO, NH2. And again, this also contains an amide group. Uh, this also contains an amide group. Okay. So you have two uh, amino acids that are containing amide group in their R group. Okay. So that those are asparagine and glutamine. Okay. Moving on to the next set. So this one, again, you have polar plus charged. Polar plus charged R group. Okay. Polar plus charged R group. So here you have lysine number one. So lysine, if you see the three letter code is LYS and the one letter code is K. So if you see the structure of lysine, it has four Four CH2 group, the R group I'm saying, four CH2 group followed by NH3 plus. So you have a net positive charge here. So that is why it is uh, a basic amino acid. Okay. So if you see CH2 four times, CH2 four times followed by NH3 plus. So this is going to be your R group. Okay. Next one is arginine. Arginine, the structure is pretty tricky and I would request you to practice it a number of times so that you can memorize it thoroughly. So if you see the structure, uh, it consists of a guanidinium group. Okay. So again, this can be a direct question in your gate exam. The guanidinium, guanidinium group containing amino acid. Which one is it? You have to mention it, mention arginine as your uh, answer. So in this case, the three letter code is going to be ARG, while the one letter code is going to be R. Okay. Just the way how you spell it, arginine. So it's R as your one letter code. 
So you have 3 CH2 followed by NH, C double bond NH2 plus and another NH2. So the overall charge is going to be positive and again this is going to be a basic amino acid. Next one is your uh, histidine. Histidine structure also requires quite a lot of practice because there is a lot of confusion regarding where to place the double bond and which uh, nitrogen is going to be positive and things like that. So I would uh, suggest a good practice for this uh, particular structure and histidine consists of your imidazole group and again this can be a direct question regarding which amino acid contains the imidazole group and your answer should be histidine. So the three letter code is HIS and your one letter code is H. Okay, so it consists of CH2 followed by this uh, uh, five uh, membered ring uh, with uh, two nitrogens, okay, placed like kind of opposite to each other with one nitrogen uh, uh, bond having a double bond plus a nitrogen attached to it and hence it's going to be positive in charge. There's, there's a four valence here for this nitrogen and hence it's positively charged. Next, it's going to be aspartate, also called aspartic acid, aspartic acid. And the three letter code is going to be ASP and the one letter code is going to be D. So just remember that. And uh, if you see the structure, it's pretty simple. CH2, COO minus. When you saw asparagine, it consists of CH2, CO, NH2. That is your amide. But in case of aspartate or aspartic acid, it consists of CH2, COO minus. Okay. So that's the difference. There you had an amide group and here you have a carboxylic acid group. And next one is glutamate. The other name is glutamic acid, okay, uh, glutamic acid and uh, the uh, three letter code is GLU and the one letter code is E. If you see the structure, again the difference between aspartic acid or aspartate and glutamic acid will be the extra CH2 similar to the one which we saw in aspargine and glutamine and again here you substitute your CONH2 which is in case of glutamine with COO- for glutamic acid, okay. So it's pretty simple. If you know the structure of asparagine and glutamate, you will be definitely knowing the structure of asparagine and glutamate because you will be just replacing the amide group with the carboxylic acid group. So with this, I am completing the 20 uh, standard amino acid structure and uh, next we go on to the 21 and 22nd uh, structure here. So if you see, uh, usually the textbooks will prescribe 20 standard amino acids but uh, recent research and findings have uh, shown there are actually 22 there is an extra 2 okay so the 21st standard amino acid is going to be your selenocysteine and its one letter code is u because i have seen this question being asked in one of the papers and a three letter code that is sec okay so please remember the one letter code at least along with the three letter code because it's pretty important and if you see uh, this selenocysteine is coded by UGA. UGA, as I said uh, in the previous slide, there is something called simple three-letter codes called codons and this UGA is actually a stop codon. What do you mean by stop codon? Is Stop codon is the one that signals the termination of peptide synthesis. So despite being a stop codon, it has, co it has been able to code for selenocysteine. So that this particular finding is one thing that is very important. To note and uh, regarding codons I will be discussing it in very great detail when I start my molecular biology lecture series and if you want to know about what is the biological importance of selenocysteine I would say that selenocysteine is uh, important is an important constituent of the catalytic centers of certain enzymes such as glutathione peroxidases and formate dehydrogenases which have very important roles in case of certain biological pathways okay. So if you see the structure of selenocysteine, it consists of, you know the structure of cysteine, right? So it's going to be COOH, it's going to be NH2 and it is going to be above H uh, and here you have CH2 and SH, okay? Instead of this S, if you put it as SE, then it is going to be selenocysteine, very simple, okay? So that's how you have to remember it. If you see the next standard amino acid, that is the 22nd standard amino acid, you have pyrrolysine. And the one letter code is O and the three letter code is PYL. Again, this is an important thing to remember. And here, pyrrolysine is also specified or coded by a stop codon, which is UAG. Okay, there are actually three stop codons. You should be knowing UAA, uh, UGA and UAG. Okay, so there are three stop codons. And UGA and UAG, UAG being uh, uh, two important stop codons, they also code for this. Uh, 21st and 22nd standard amino acid. 
okay pyrrolysin is actually present in some bacterial proteins and if you see the structure of pyrrolysin again uh, you have to practice this structure you know lysine you have ch2 four times uh, and an nh3 plus uh, down below so i will draw the structure here uh, cooh nh2 okay so ch2 uh, four times ch2 four times below you have nh3 plus okay but if you see pyrrolysin after you have nh and one hydrogen is replaced by this co c this particular group okay co bonded to this five membered ring okay and with the methyl uh, atom also with the methyl group also attached to this carbon atom okay so this particular structure you have to practice as i said for lysine arginine uh, histidine uh, tryptophan etc make sure that you also practice and master this structure okay so these are the 21st and 22nd standard amino acid apart from the 20 standard amino acids that we have seen in the previous tabulation okay so moving on to the last slide so here i have mentioned further classification of amino acid that is classification of amino acids such as aliphatic amino acids aromatic hydroxyl carboxylic sulfur containing amino amide amino acid okay so these are very important you might be asked very uh, easy questions from these uh, in gate exam in, in case of like recall type questions like the direct questions okay so if if they ask you what are the aliphatic amino acids then you have to mention this g uh, glycine alanine valine leucine and isoleucine you can remember the code as gavli okay i usually remember it like this and if you say aromatic amino acid it's phenylalanine tyrosine and tryptophan you will be definitely remembering this uh, these three amino acids because we will be using these three amino acids as the main case when we talk about uv with spectroscopy techniques okay and next one is hydroxyl group containing amino acids as i already mentioned it's going to be serine and threonine carboxylic acid containing amino acids will be aspartic acid and uh, glutamic acid or aspartate and glutamate sulfur containing amino acids will be cysteine and methionine all these are with respect to only the r group and not the skeletal group okay okay they are already called amino acid but whatever classification that we are mentioning till now or till date is uh, only with respect to the r group okay and then amino acid amino group containing amino acid so it's going to be lysine and arginine because lysine and arginine have uh, amino group in their uh, r group okay and uh, amide amide group containing amino acid will be asparagine and glutamine and uh, amino acid as i already mentioned it's going to be proline because it contains a secondary amino group okay uh, in, in attached to the c alpha carbon itself and uh, one more important uh, point or uh, fact to keep in mind is the list of essential and uh, non essential amino acids what are essential amino acids is that these are not being synthesized by our body and they have to be supplemented to our body in the form of diet and uh, we have to make sure that we have a balanced diet so that we meet uh, the uh, repository or the required amount of essential amino acids in our body without amino acids we won't have proteins without proteins survival becomes a question mark okay so the essential amino acids include histidine isoleucine leucine lysine methionine phenylalanine threonine tryptophan and valine if you can make some uh, code word with the help of the one letter codes that i have given you like h i l uh lysine is k methionine is m phenylalanine is f threonine tryptophan valine if you can make some code word or code or a mnemonic out of this then it's going to be easy for you to remember for non essential amino acids it's going to be the uh, other 11 because if you remember essential the odd one outs are going to be the non essential that's how i remember it it's going to be uh, alanine uh, alanine uh, arginine alanine asparagine Uh, aspartic acid glutamine glutamic acid cysteine glycine proline serine and tyrosine so if you can remember this the left out ones are going to be non essential amino acids so with this i am completing the basic com important properties of uh, amino acids and uh, this is my first video of uh, the biochemistry lecture series uh, i will be uh, discussing various other important concepts as well in this biochemistry series so the further concepts on amino acids will be discussed in the second video of biochemistry series i don't want to drag this video to a very uh, high amount of time i just want to keep it crisp and short so that it will be easy for you to remember as well as revise in the last minute so i request all of you to stay tuned and watch all the lectures of my biochemistry series and the upcoming series as well 
I would request all of you to like, share and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed this video. Happy learning and thank you.